Warning, you are about to enter the BGP suite. No thongs, no boy shorts, no thigh highs, no commandos are permissible. BGP, big girl panties only. So pull up to woman up. And out. please don't leave with your panties in a bunch. Welcome to BGP. Um, today we are going to talk about pretty privilege. And the reason why we're talking about pretty privilege today is because uh, a recent video came out by a YouTuber named Stephanie. Um, she goes by O Stephanie now. Uh, she made a video discussing pretty privilege and, and why it sucks because she believes that she doesn't have it. And a lot of people um, identified with what she was speaking on in the comment section, and then there are some that were in denial and pretended like it doesn't exist. But we're going to talk about it today. And before I turn it over to the ladies, I'm just going to kind of give a brief description of what pretty privilege is, okay? So pretty privilege is the idea that people who are deemed more attractive based on society standards have an advantage over those who are deemed less attractive or average people in the world, okay? And so she was speaking on her experiences um, on what it's like not to, you know, have pretty privilege as compared to her friends. And so we're gonna get started with my very first question. Or actually, before I even get to the questions, I'll give you some examples of pretty privilege, like people who benefit from pretty privilege. You may get like free passes on stuff. You may get excused out of like bad behavior. You may get job preferential treatment over those who, you know, may have more experience, but because of your looks, you know, they're like, let's go with this particular person. You might receive free gifts. People want to be friends with you. People want to hang out with you. People want to just be around you. Um, so my question for the first, my first question, and I'm going to throw it at Adrian first and Demona is, have you ever experienced pretty privilege? Hmm. I don't think that I necessarily have experienced pretty privilege. I think some of the perks that I get just come from me being really nice. <laughs> I think. Uh, I think there are some times that um, if my hair is freshly done, I got my makeup going, I, I do see, I have had times where I've gotten out of a ticket before. Um, uh, maybe gotten in at the club long time ago. This is when I was a little younger before the, all that. Um, okay. Maybe get pulled to the front of the line. Okay. So, yeah, I think I've experienced it a couple of times. Oh, so but only have. on a very, very good day. On a very good day. Like when I'm like face beat, hair done, that kind of thing. All like right. when I really have put in some extra work. But just on, a, on GP, I don't think, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Mona, have you ever experienced pretty privilege? I don't know if I've experienced pretty privilege because I don't like that stereotype. Have I experienced getting things because I am a woman? Absolutely. Have I experienced things because I am feminine? Absolutely. Like um, Adrian said, have I experienced getting some privileges because I'm nice? Absolutely. Okay. So for what me. What about you? For me, I would say, um, so I was in denial about it because I was like, nah, because I, I deem myself to be like the average woman, mm -hmm. the average black woman that we see um, in this world, right? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't have the exotic look, right? I'm just that black woman that with those West African features. But I, after having discussions with different people, um, I was made aware that maybe I do because they, they were like, when we go places, I kind of get pushed up to certain situations on a list or um, I've definitely like you I've gotten out of tickets just based on mm -hmm. <laughs> just based <Yep>. on smiling <laughs> and opening up my mouth like oh I know. Oh, um, <laughs> exactly. What did I do? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Just, you know, drive slower next time. <laughs> okay. Um, I recently, you know, received some gifts. Um, and was able to do something. So, but I didn't equate that to pretty privilege. I just equated initially to, I'm that nice person. Yes. But someone said, 
but they've never experienced that. They being that particular person, they've never experienced it. They've experienced like showing up with friends to go somewhere and the men who were around was like, why you bring mm. her, you know, or you guys can go, not her though. You know, like I, I you know, I, I didn't experience that, but when I heard some of the things I was like, well, maybe, maybe I have. So I, I don't know, I'm on the fence with it. Um, I do think pretty privilege does exist, um, but I don't know if I've experienced it. I do know that I have gotten away with some things. I have had some advantages with certain positions in my career, but I've experienced that other side too, so I don't know. But I want to talk about Miss Steffi's video. And one of the things that she said in the beginning was, she lived in California, in LA, for four years before she had enough and, you know, the straw broke the camel's back. Um, and she experienced dolling herself up, feeling really beautiful. She did her makeup, did her hair, had the, the, the dress and the crown that was like, it's my birthday. Mm. And went out, walked in, um, saw a group of people, like a group of men, none of them paid her any attention, mm. went and sat down. Her friend came in not too long behind her and she did have boobs, she said, but she, she also has that pretty look. And as soon as she walked in, all eyes was on her, mm -hmm. right? And so I guess my, my question, and that can go to either one of you, is have you ever experienced being that person of when you walk in a room, everybody want to know, who are you? I have. I've experienced that. And a lot of times I attribute it to... Um, my daughter always says, you're so extra because I do do a lot of um, like my style of dress or I'm really into shoes and I may wear a shoe that is uh, extraordinary. You know what I mean? It's not like any other one. And I'll come in a room and it is kind of all eyes on me because people are like just shocked at the outfit that I'm wearing. I don't necessarily think it has to do with the the. A beauty thing I just think is I come in and already you come some people just exude confidence yes and sometimes you come in and you kind of like maybe it's your smile or your energy and it just kind of takes over I don't think it's always about the look because some people can look really pretty mm -hmm. and have a stuck-up nasty stank attitude mm -hmm. and right away people just are like mm, look at this you know heifer or whatever <laughs> but um, so I think it's so much more than just um, getting attention just because you're beautiful Okay. Yeah. Mona, same question. What's the question again? Have you ever walked into an establishment and as you walk in, pretty much everybody wants to know who's that? Like you became that it person in that moment where every all eyes were on you, wanting to know who you were, wanting to talk to you. Every day. Mm-hmm. Well, that. all right. Okay. <laughs> well, and, and just like Adrian said, it's the way you carry yourself. Mm -hmm. It's the way you extend yourself to others. It's the way that you engage with other people. It's the way that you are approachable. Yes, yeah, sometimes your attire does uh, make it, but let's unpack this, girl. Let's go. Okay. So, yeah, we need a whole plane to unpack all the baggage that she has mm -hmm. within this video. I think this video is attention whoring at its finest. Mm -hmm. um, we said in our first video that we wanted to stop the gender wars mm -hmm. between the men and the women, mm -hmm. and now we have to fight the gender war within our own um uh, group. We, we we have the pretty versus the unattractive, the light skin versus the mm -hmm. dark skin. And inside this video is that, inside the video is colorism because when she did mention about her friend, she made sure that she said she was biracial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She made sure she said she was light skinned. Mm -hmm. She made sure she said that her hair was blonde or it was colored blonde and mm -hmm. all eyes were on the young lady. First of all, sometimes when you go out looking for attention, you're not going to get no attention. Mm -hmm. Second of all, she said that she's not really used to dressing up mm -hmm. and dolling herself up. So if you're not used to it, you don't look natural when you walk into mm -hmm. a room. Mm -hmm. You look like you're fake. Mm -hmm. So you come out in fakeness and expect something real. Third of all, everybody has a preference. You might not be that preference. True. Let's take me for for instance. There are some men in the world that do not like Mona Lachey. 
They are not attracted to Mona Lachey because Mona Lachey has a short haircut. Mm -hmm. And Mona Lachey will go Michael Jordan bald. Mm -hmm. They don't like me because I have freckles and I have big lips and I'm 5'4 and I'm not a size 4 and I got a big old booty. Let's flip it. There are some men that act, act absolutely adore Mona Lachey and her shortcut. They don't care how bald I am. They just think I am an attractive woman. They like my freckles. They want to count them. They like my lips and my big ass booty because they're probably trying to figure out which what, what either one of them do. They like that I'm short. So here's my thing about the whole uh, pretty privileged situation. Do I exert my time and my energy and my feelings and emotions and my heart to try to get men that are not attractive to me trying to prove that I'm the best woman for the job? Or do I go over here where I am genuinely loved, mm -hmm. authentically appreciated, mm -hmm. protected and provided for, and looked out for? That's the whole thing. The bottom line to this is people have preferences. I, I agree. They, they do have preferences. And I... When I listened to that video, and I even listened to her follow-up video, there was never a thing where she was trying to cause a division between light skin and dark skin or anything of that, that aspect. She was just making a point to show that your average black woman, the woman that's not deemed exotic, the woman that's not, um, that, that, that can't pass a paper bag test, right? Um, a lot of times she is passed over. She is. Mm -hmm. I can agree with you. People do have their preferences. We all do. Like, I prefer a tall man because I'm tall, right? Um, I prefer a man that's more, has that exudes more alpha qualities because I just, I'm a submissive, but that's a different story. But in her situation, like she said, she was, it wasn't that she wanted the attention per se. That's a lie. For her, let me finish. For her, I'm just saying, she was saying that what she, what she realizes and she's come to accept, without bashing, is that being an average woman, average looking woman, does not work for her, especially in California. She has since moved to another state where she has a little bit more options, where people are you know, looking out for her and checking for her, but being an average looking woman in this particular state, California, D was not working for her. So, go ahead. My problem is I don't like when people project their uh, insecurities. And it seems to be that the video that shows the most dysfunction in our society mm -hmm. are the videos that get the most views. And then you have a subgroup of women that just latch on to this it's like sticky paper, and they just latch on to it. There are, okay, I'm, I'm going to tell the story. So let's say we're all going out. Mm -hmm. we're, we're a click. Adrian has her click. She mm -hmm. invites her click. You mm -hmm. have your click. You mm -hmm. invite your click. Mm -hmm. So within this click, there was a group of young ladies that would be considered very exotic, very pretty, mm -hmm. very privileged, if that's the word you want to use. And there was a dark-skinned young lady. Mm -hmm. And when she walked in, they asked the question, do you guys think she's cute? Because I think she's ugly. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting there listening. And so they were like, no, nah, I think she's ugly. But that lady who was dark-skinned, her hair was always on point. Her outfit was always on point. Mm -hmm. She smelled good. She had a pleasing personality. Mm -hmm. She was married. Mm -hmm. She had a husband that adored her. Mm -hmm. She had a beautiful home. She had uh, access to multiple luxury cars. They didn't take a vacation every year. They took vacations every weekend. She was loved and adored and cherished. And everywhere we went, she got love. Mm -hmm. And she was considered the ugly girl of the group. Mm -hmm. So what we have to understand is if you... See, I don't like the fact that somebody wants to say, oh, I have a prejudice against this person because of what they, how they were born, mm -hmm. their facial features. That is a prejudice. And here's the thing. Stereotypes do exist, good and bad. Absolutely. Yes. But stereotypes do cause division. Mm -hmm. They do cause chaos, confusion. Mm -hmm. They make people stagnant. They make people more aware of the insecurities that they have not recovered from. 
And that's why I don't like the conversation. It makes us not be able to move on and focus on the things that we need to focus on, such as sisterhood. Mm-hmm. So she was seeking attention. She said she went, put on her dress, mm-hmm. she bought something from Fashion Nova. Mm-hmm. She put her makeup on and she wanted her eye, all eyes on me moment, mm-hmm. which she didn't get. Mm-hmm. Like I said, sometimes when you're looking for something, you don't get it. Sometimes when you think you're beautiful, uh, other people don't think you're beautiful. Uh, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Mm-hmm. What we as women look at another woman and say, oh, she's cute. Some men will say, no, nah, she's not. Mm-hmm. 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 You True. know, so she was looking for attention, and she got a lot of attention. So I'm quite sure. And she has a prejudice against unattractive men. So how do you have a prejudice against other uh, unattractive men, but you feel that you're average, but you want the attractive men to gravitate towards you? There's a lot in there that she said. Mm-hmm. She's, oh, she said a lot. She yeah. But, mm-hmm. and, and I just want to make this clear. Not something that she said, but just because I know some people, based on discussions I've had recently, pretty privilege does not only equate to the light-skinned woman or the exotic-looking woman. Pretty privilege, there can be a dark-skinned woman who also exudes pretty privilege, right? Just Absolutely. like there can be a brown skin, mm-hmm. there can be a light. Like it, it's, it's all levels of the flavor that can exude pretty privilege. So it's not just based on um, the skin tone or if you are, quote-unquote, biracial. It's not that. It's just um, in her particular situation, she was, ref- she was comparing herself to her friends um and she made one statement and i've since made it to a few people and they laugh and they've been like shut up but i and i i just told these ladies as well and i said so the next time we have a meeting we meeting at the fucking coffee shop just so we clear because i can't i'm not doing this comparison with two women that i deem to be pretty right and so so then, then we can't be friends. No, unless we meet at the coffee and shop. We can't be friends then because that's some bullshit. <laughs> we going and to the coffee shop. <laughs> there are women that are darker skin, uh, brown, dark skin that have pretty Beautiful. privilege. But she just because we're talking about her video, mm-hmm. she specifically talked about Lori Harvey. Yes, she's talked about Ciara. Yes, and she mm-hmm. talked about her other biracial friend. So for her, it was a light skin, dark skin type of situation. If you call yourself my friend and mm-hmm. we could only meet at the coffee shop or going to the mall or at an early dinner. I'm never going to hang out with you. <laughs> you can't be my friend. That's some bullshit. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be around a woman that has low self-esteem. Right. I don't want to be invited to your pity party. You're going to get you a sense of style. You're going to get yourself correct. <laughs> and we're going to hang out. Right. Because here's the thing. Pretty women suffer from pretty privilege, too, mm-hmm. because there's always somebody prettier than, than somebody you. else. Exactly. True. Very true. So mm-hmm. here's my thing. What if a pretty woman, mm-hmm. or everybody uh, deemed pretty, made a video and said, I'm tired of uh, pretty privilege. Mm-hmm. I'm tired of um, getting drooled over. Mm-hmm. I'm tired of getting money and in my uh, cash app because this is what one of the examples that the lady used when I wake up in the morning. I'm tired of men just uh, uh, coming to my aid just because of the way I look. Mm-hmm. That video, would all hell would break loose. It would look like she was bragging. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It would look like she was getting a, attention. So I didn't appreciate the way this young lady wrapped up all her insecurities, all of her low Mm self-esteem, all of her uh, low self-image, and wrapped it into pretty privilege. She needs some therapy. She needs to get some self-esteem. She needs to work on herself. So about that, like she said in her follow-up videos, is what she did for that month that she was working on this was it was dealing with mental issues and she admitted that there was mental issues going on and I guess last month was supposed to be mental issue month I'm I'm not you know Mm -hmm. so she was working on that that was supposed to be her final video for the month and that one was the one because it was also her birthday month Mm. where she decided I'm gonna talk about this today because this is how I feel and she didn't expect for that video to go viral a lot of people don't expect certain videos to go viral, at least not that one. But unfortunately, 
there's a lot of people that can identify with how she feels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I don't I don't fault her for speaking her truth. I don't fault her for saying we, we shouldn't even be talking about that. Like you need to get some self-esteem, sister, because you are beautiful. Hearing women are sisters, whether they're big sisters, little sisters, friends, whatever. Hearing women tell other women, oh, sis, you're beautiful. Don't do That's nice. But it's when so when you go out into the real world and you want you want to attract that man, whomever he may be, however he may look or whatever, and you see that the men that you're attracted to aren't attracted to women who look like you, mm -hmm. right? They look like something else. I can understand why you want to say, I don't have pretty privilege and it sucks. Mm -hmm. And I'm not mad at her for expressing her truth in that video. I think it's a... I think it was a good it's a good video. Mm -hmm. I think it, it, it leads to open discussions that a lot of times we don't talk about and people always want to equate it to like the colorism discussion or the issues that we have with other gender discussions. Like because it, it wasn't even that. It was just she was just saying, I don't have it and it sucks. Mm -hmm. You know, I have like she she literally made that and said in the video her follow up video, like I have to make peace with the fact that I may never get married. Mm. I may never have children. I, I have to make peace with that because I'm not deemed what society says is attractive. And let's be clear, we got so we got a certain YouTuber who I won't say his name, who loved to tell black women, especially women that look like her, are oh, you just a two? You <coughs> just a three? Mm -hmm. You need to, you know, just you gonna die alone. So let's let's not just make it look like it's all up in her head. And he did respond to her video, by the way. But let's but carry on. Go ahead. I appreciate her her transparency and saying how she felt because there are a lot of people that feel that way. Yes. Um. Even pretty girls that have maybe had a situation happen in their life that now has them so insecure, feeling ha having this low self esteem. So a lot of times they seek validation mm -hmm. through how they get attention from others, whether it be male, mostly male, because that's what we that's most what of we us are looking for. Right. Right. So um, I know. Sometimes after a situation, a lot of people will do stuff, and I have to use myself, is where you go excessive with the post of mm -hmm. your own pictures because you're looking to see, does somebody like it? Gratification. Am I okay? Yeah. Yes. So, and it does happen. So I don't want to knock her for how she feels because there's a lot of people that feel that way. And, and sometimes all it takes is one little incident to push you over that edge of thinking that you're not enough. Mm -hmm. And if I could just say anything is to encourage women that – you are enough. Be okay. And I, I, I always love those women that are confident no matter what. They put on their two-piece and they 250 pounds and they go out there and they just feel good about themselves. That's a lovely thing. That's but not every, confidence. I, I, <laughs> well, for them, it for might the, be. Yeah. For it them, it may be. It has to because I know I couldn't do it. I you couldn't know, do it. I got stretch marks all over my stomach. <laughs> and, I, I, and, you know, and even if they show a little bit, I get funny. You know what I mean? So... That would be difficult for me. So I don't know what else to call it other than confidence. It's denial. Mm. It's that you think every time they make something, you can wear it too. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's a strong um, sense of low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. It's a tension yeah. horn as well. Um, I'm not knocking the young lady for saying how she feels. I'm just saying within that video was a whole lot of prejudices mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. that, that that were unappreciated. I, I didn't appreciate um First of all, I'll, I'll save that for later. She <laughs> talked about going in nightclubs. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she'd go into nightclubs and nobody ever bought her a drink or mm -hmm. somebody elbowed her trying to get to, to get another to the, woman. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, nightclubs are really not the place where you want to find a good man. When you think about nightclubs, they were created in the late 1800s. And within the nightclubs, they were actually for the military men that you know, got off the ships for leave. Mm -hmm. It was for the Playboys. Uh, nightclubs were un unlicensed uh, alcohol. It was prostitution in nightclubs. There was fighting, stabbings, mm -hmm. beatings. Fast forward all the way up to today, and that's what basically happens in nightclubs. Uh, commercial sex, you know, a man dances with you, he buys you a couple of drinks, and then he tries to get in your drawers. That's what nightclubs are really for, easy access to sex. So uh, I say around the 1920s, 
that's when they started having cocaine mm -hmm. in the nightclubs. Uh, the 1970s is the Bill Cosby era where they had the Quaaludes. You got to uh, the 80s and they had uh, acid. <laughs> you know, they was popping acid and they was uh, snorting that kryptonite would make them be real energetic. And then you fast Trance. forward to, to the 2000s, they're, they're on ecstasy, ecstasy. ecstasy pills and shit. So I wouldn't really want a man to buy me a drink. He might slip some shit in my drink. I understand the concept of what she's saying. Mm -hmm. However, I expect adults to be adults. And we need to put childish things behind us. We need to heal ourselves, recover, see what it is, and fix the problem. Because I, she also said that she used to hang around gay men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where she felt comfortable. That's where she felt safe. That's where they told her that she was pretty. And it kind of uh, reminded her of how her father treated her, which I don't know how you can equate a heterosexual mm -hmm. man to a homosexual man in reference to your father. But then she turned around and said that she fell in love with one of the gay men. And that was going to be a disaster because he was looking for the same thing that she was looking for. So also it might be she has a poor choice in men. She might have some entitlement issues. She might uh, not be in her correct lane. I, I yes, I'm going to go back to what you said about like what the clubs is about. And I agree with you on that. But we've all been 20. We've all been in mm -hmm, our 20s mm -hmm, and we've all mm -hmm. gone to clubs. And I know what it's like to, well, let me take that back. I don't know what it's like to go through what she's gone through. When I've gone to clubs, I didn't buy drinks. I didn't. Um, other men would do. They would step up, what you got, and I'm going to get your friends too, mm -hmm. right? And that's, I'm not bragging, but I'm just saying that's just what it is. You knew, like, we all dressed up. We all together. We all walked in there. If somebody was buying drinks, they bought all of us drinks. Like, and, and, and people took turns, like, I got this round. I got that round. I got this round. Um, people would ask you to dance. Like, you, you would dance and whatnot. If you fast forward to today's time with the millennials, at least from when I've had conversations with them, with the girls, when they, two things happen. There's like this separation when you go in there. The men aren't checking for, they're not, you know, entertaining the women. They're just over there with their friends, right? And if they are checking for the women, unfortunately, it's not the black women. It's the other women, mm -hmm. right? And so they're facing that. They're facing things that we didn't face when we was in our 20s. So to tell them, suck it up, get you some self-esteem, and you're going to be all right, to me, I feel is a little unrealistic mm -hmm. when they're facing things that we didn't face when we was going out in our 20s. When we was going out in our 20s, men were checking for women. They were, and they didn't, they, they didn't really kind of care. What, they didn't care what you look like just as long as you had the body, you dress nice, you smell good, your friends was cool, all y'all was cute and everything. Everybody had a good time. But when you, if you go to a club today and you walk in there, you will see there is a difference. You'll see that group of black women over here. You'll see the other ethnicities everywhere else. And you'll see the men checking for that group of women, right? And and that that's just how it is. So... I, I feel for her because I get it. Like, I, I understand. I'm, I may not be in her situation as far as um, being ignored, but I, I, I know what it's like. Mm -hmm. I have experienced being ignored. So I'm, I'm not going to dismiss that and be like, just get you some self-esteem and you'll be all right. Because right. that's not necessarily the case for uh, millennials. It's mm -hmm. not. And I agree. It's easier said than done to just heal, get over it, move on. We don't know how deep that comes from mm -hmm. for her. You know what I mean? She something could have happened. I don't. You know, I don't know the depth of her pain or where that that's coming from. But I know from my from myself and other people that I know, um, you can have one incident that, and it just stays with you. And for whatever reason, every single time uh, a situation comes about, you either think you you just feel like. I don't fit in with everyone else. This person looks better than me. Her hair is better than mine. And it's really sad. Yeah. But it is something that a lot of women okay. suffer and, and struggle with is, is being okay with who they are. So I think that's why I said that um, 
the confidence that I see in some women that that they can just and they feel so comfortable within them. So I think probably because my father was one to tell me the, the very thing that you said, Mona, is like, look, just because they had that in your size don't mean you sh you can wear it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that was already a breakdown. It's always already like, dang, my daddy is checking me on my outfit. I, I, clearly, I must look a mess, you know. So it's hard. And um, I think if if we're wanting to to promote this sisterhood thing, we have to be a little bit sensitive in the fact that it is not as easy as just healing and getting over it. It's so much deeper than that. And it takes a lot of time. Every process, everybody's process is different. So absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not discounting. I'm saying that everybody has good and bad days. Mm -hmm. Yes. Everybody wakes up in the morning and be like, damn, I look terrible today. <laughs> everybody has, has faced some type of rejection. Yes. Absolutely. Everybody didn't get the man that they wanted. Yes. Pretty girls um, don't get the, uh, the men that they want all the time. Mm -hmm. Pretty girls are baby mamas. Pretty girls can't find husbands. Pretty girls don't get the jobs that they applied for. Get Pretty you, girls man. don't get the loans that they applied for. So that's why I'm saying be an adult. That's why I'm saying get you a sense of style, get in your lane, mm -hmm. rock your shit, and have confidence. It's nothing worse than trying to seek outside validation from people that don't freaking know you. Your validation is, is supposed to come from yourself. It, it should, Beauty it should. is supposed to come from the inside out. So if you're in public and you're exuding, oh, I'm never going to get married. Oh, I'm never going to have kids. Oh, nobody's going to love me. Oh, I'm not worthy. Guess what? You you're admitting you're gonna show that it. out yes. into the universe. You're, you're right. And everybody else can see it. I agree. I agree with you. That is she true. said she doesn't doll herself up. Because where is she going? Doll, doll yourself up for you, honey. Maybe because, she don't know how, though. Maybe okay, she needs a big sister then, like Momo to tell her, look, baby, because you know you quick to, when, <laughs> when, I, <laughs> when my junk ain't right, we're about to do this photo shoot. Uh-uh, come over here, let me do it. And, and you're so good with that. And some people need a big sister like Momo. But you know why? Because I want, I say no ugly pictures. Mm -hmm. That's right. I want us to look our best. Yes. I'm not going to let you go out and your bra strap is showing. Exactly. Or, your, you know, something is not right. Mm -hmm. Because we represent each right. other. Exactly. Right. And I, what I want for myself, I want for you. Good. If I want to look beautiful and sexy and alluring and sophisticated and classy or goofy or whatever we try right. to, right. you know, portray to that, I want you to look just as good as me. Right. Like, I, like I tell y'all all the time, bring your A game. Mm-hmm. Everybody bring their A game. Bring your A game. Uh, uh, <laughs> and here's the thing, and I'm sorry I'm not being um, uh, unsympathetic, but <laughs> I'm a hairstylist. I gravitate towards hair. She need to lose that wig. That mm. wig is horrible. It does not do her any justice. That headband, she needs to take that off. See, here's the thing. When women get dressed up and they their hair is fly, and their makeup is fly, and they got on some clothes, and they're fly, and they walk into a social gathering. Sometimes women become very bougie, mm -hmm. uppity, mm -hmm. stuck up, stank face. The men that they would speak to on the on the streets when they're just um, in their regular clothes, they're not having that tonight. So when men come to approach them, they're giving them the stank mm -hmm. face. They're looking like, mm -mm, don't even come over here. Don't try it. And what we don't understand is, as women is, you never know who's watching you. True. You never know what man is looking at you and like, hmm, she looks like an interesting lady. Yep. So if you're out in the streets looking toe up, like a bus down, he's thinking, hmm, she might have my children out in the, sleep, in the streets looking bus down and toe up. If she suffers from low self-esteem, if she doesn't feel good about herself, she may have my children feeling that way. So you got to be become an adult. You have to know that stereotypes and labels are, are going to exist, mm -hmm. but you're, you can't participate in that. Be the best that you can be. Have a beautiful personality, and somebody is going to love you for who you are. Mm -hmm. You might have some high expectations. You might need to go check for those average men that are checking for her. Because I don't like the fact that she said she didn't go to places where she would find men unattractive. That's an issue for mm -hmm. her. I want to know what you do when you see the men that you do not find attractive. Do you turn your nose up to them? Do you engage them? Because you might find your man right there. 
We have to stop being so superficial and dig deep and find out about what a man does, the essence of who he is, what his goals, what his dreams are, and that may become more attractive to you. I'm quite sure that if Adrian and Nisha seen the men that I love, the men that I call in, call on, mm -hmm. the men that I know got my back, if they saw them, their physical attributes, they might be like, oh, I would have never talked to him. Oh, he's <laughs> unattractive. Mm. But the inside of who they are man. and mm -hmm. who I've learned them to be make them some of the most handsome men on the planet without them having the aesthetic that everybody is going to yeah, turn their heads right, for. Right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we need to do that. Yeah. Cause I don't, I don't even okay. date pretty boys. I don't, I don't. They come. I don't. I, I like my men ugly, so <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest. Not ugly. <laughs> not <laughs> ugly. Just yeah. I mean, not ugly, but I like the men that nobody want. Put it that way. I'm attracted to the men that nobody want, but you know, like if something happens, I know he gonna show up and go batshit crazy. Yes. Um That's just that's who I like. And just speaking of men, we have the the average men that think they can't get anywhere. Mm -hmm. And they go on and on and on and They following on. behind and certain YouTubers. And Those year after year, yep. I'm average Joe and yep. I'm number oh, three wow. and yep. I can't get women. Or it's the man on there, he can't get any sex and he's been begging for sex for so long. Till one day I was like, boy, come get some. Okay. <laughs> Shut up. Because he felt he was an average looking dude and he was getting passed on getting sex. And women should give him sex just because he's a man. And, a good guy. And, 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 and they're a woman. So that's what I'm saying. All these things that we harp on or hone into, stop thinking about negative things about yourself. Mm -hmm. Think about the positive of yourself. If you don't have a sense of style, go to the mall. Get somebody, uh, like you say, get some friends. Mm -hmm. Some woman that you admire her style, her makeup, her hair, and people will show you how to do things. I don't like my sisters to be in this world where we are really at the bottom, mm -hmm. keeping on with the negativity. Mm -hmm. Be your best. And we know when we're not our best. And we want to be accepted for things that we know we can improve. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Be the best woman that you can be. I also didn't like the fact that she also said that she was at the airport. Mm -hmm. She was at the airport and some man, I guess she Oh, was. the airport story. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, you want me Go to ahead. tell it? Go ahead. Okay, so her airport story was she was at the airport and she noticed that this one particular gentleman... Everywhere she was, he was too, while they were going through their steps of check-in, going to the gate. They happened to be on the same flight and everything. And they were like, you know, with not too far from each other. Mm -hmm. Enough to be like, hey, how you doing? Mm -hmm. It never happened. He, he never spoke to her. He never said anything. It was just like, you know, two strangers. However, when she got on the plane and sat down, he sat a row like to the left, but right in front of her, next to a young lady who was pretty. She, she thought was pretty she, thought she, was, had, a, she, she had a mask she, on. She had a mask on, but she said you could tell she was pretty, right? And she said, sure enough, while she was sitting there listening, that man started talking, having a conversation, invited her to a get-together at, at, a, you know, at a, a location out here in Cali. You know, he just started talking, and I kiki ki, ki, and laughing and everything, and she was just like, never happened with her. He didn't say anything when they was in, you know, when he was around her, but as soon as he saw the lady that she deemed to be pretty, he started speaking and inviting her to places. Mm. Okay. So what are your thoughts on that? I'm going to tell you in a minute, but I want to add this first. Okay. Black women. If you believe in black feminist ideology, you are part of the problem. What men are facing right now is the Me Too era. Men are misogynistic. Men are male chauvinists. Men are... Uh, Toxic with their masculinity. Uh, women are being called mammies and pygmies. And all of this came from black women and black feminists. What happened to black girls rock? I guess we don't have no black girl magic. What happened to Kamala Harris and the Chucks and the Pearls and we rule the world? What happened to that, all that? It's a bunch of fluff. Now, the young lady said the man didn't talk to her. How about she talked to him? Mm. How about she initiated Some the conversation? conversation? Mm. Because, see, what the Me Too era has created was a sense where black men, and I'm a, I can only speak for my men, black men don't know what to do. Mm. They have retreated. Mm. 
They are very standoffish because if they shoot their shots verbally, oh, that might be sexual harassment. Mm. Men used to lightly tap you on the shoulder. Excuse me, Miss Lady. Oh, I feel assaulted. They reach for your hand. The things that men naturally do as being masculine men, they're getting deemed for that. They're getting charges placed on them. They're going to prison for that. So they like, hell no, I'm not approaching a woman. And sometimes we have to be aware of our social, I mean, our facial expressions when we're out in the public. Do you look engaging? Do you look approachable? She might have been sitting there mean mugging mm-hmm. because of the fact mm-hmm. that she suffers from low mm-hmm. self-esteem. She already says nobody ain't going to talk to her. She could have initiated a conversation, and it's no telling what could have happened. That's true. Mm-hmm. That is true. And that. we do have to get to where we can let our guards down a little bit because I think sometimes in her situation, again, we don't know the depth of where, where why she is the way she is, but for some reason she's just so standoffish she has this guard up and pe- men can without you saying one word they can pick up on that's true that they can pick it's like it's written across your head don't touch don't me don't talk to me, me. don't, don't say nothing. yeah so <laughs> it's like you said it's the energy you give that's true and if you're giving that non-approachable energy ain't nobody gonna say nothing to you because it's already like you give it i've never been that one that somebody but i've had friends that they say dang your friend be looking mean and I'm the total opposite. I'm always smiling, you know, and, and then I get accused of being flirtatious. Mm-hmm. But it's really just who I am. My energy is bubbly and I like being around people. But my friends who always are complaining about not having a good man, they don't want to sit up there looking. When they go out. Oh, yeah, eyes exactly. Right. So you have to really, your, your facial expression, your body language says a lot. And if it's already putting up that, you know, back Don't up talk type to me, thing. Especially if you, you do have this. To be, yeah, exactly. All those little God. things of, you know, like you're not interested. You have to be aware of that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. I agree with that. Like I, I, I've had conversations with friends because, again, they question when we go out. They'd be like, anybody will just come up to you and talk to you. And I'm like, no. Nah. But they do. Uh-huh. They'll just walk up and be like, hey, yes. how you doing, beautiful? Hi. Uh, can I get you something? What you doing? What you drinking? And we'll start having conversations and just talking about whatever mm-hmm. just because. But when it's just her or it's just them and let's say they're waiting on me, no one says anything to them. Mm-hmm. But I tell them, like, if you have your arms like this, if you give that resting bitch face, yes. if you give that don't talk to me look, they're not going to come because you can pick up on that. You can sense that where it's like, oh, they don't they don't want to be bothered. So I'm going to just I'm going to let them be. Right. I, I, I guess I don't give that. I, I smile a lot. I mean, they call me smiley for a reason. Mm-hmm. Um, and I try to give that inviting look like I don't care who you are. We can have a conversation. Mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. It's not based on looks, but we can talk about any and everything. How's your day? How's your job? What's life like for you? What does this look like for you? Like I, we, we can do that. So I think that's why I attract different people that are just walk up and just mm-hmm. start talking. You know, I don't, I don't know. Absolutely. If we go into the club right now. I guarantee you, Mr. Jerry Curl, who has, <laughs> who has, has a ponytail, but he got more rubber bands than ponytail, a gold tooth, he's honing straight for me. <laughs> I can, and, and, and we've done it multiple times, went out, and I'll be like, that one right there, watch what he do. He coming for me, right? Ooh. And it'll be the man that I wouldn't particularly be attracted to, and they would be like, you so beautiful, and you kind of like a diamond. <laughs> and I, but still, I don't be like, oh, get the hell out of here. Yeah, you no, still I, I have a conversation. I still talk to them. Yeah. I say thank you. If they ask me to dance, as long as it's a fast dance, I dance with them. So, yeah, Nisha's absolutely correct. It's how you carry yourself. Mm-hmm. I, I, I do security now. So, during COVID, we had to wear a mask. When I first got there, I'm like, good morning. Have a good day. How's your day? Oh, you look nice today. Blah, 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 blah. They weren't speaking to me. Mm-hmm. And it didn't have nothing to do with if I was pretty or ugly. It's just the environment. Mm-hmm. I do feel sorry for Gen X and the millennials because of the environment that has been created. Yes. But it didn't make me suffer from low self-esteem. Mm-hmm. I'm fine when I'm fat. I'm fine when I'm skinny. I'm fine when I'm bald-headed. I'm extra fine when I got 40 inches of weave. I'm just <laughs> fine. I'm very secure in who Mona Lachey is. So... I just kept on doing it every day because I wanted to have a good day on my job. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be on my job like a zombie. Then I kept on doing it. Good morning. How are you? Oh, nice hair. Oh, you have beautiful eyes. Till they couldn't do nothing but melt. 
Two weeks later, they looking for Mona. Miss mm-hmm. Mona, how you doing, Miss Mona? Have a good day, Miss Mona. Oh, Miss Mona, you changed shift. We really appreciated you on our shift. Blah, 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 blah. Now, two weeks ago, we got to take our mask off. Mm. Now, they looking at this mouth, right? <laughs> and now, because I wear a secur- security guard uniform, it's not sexy. But now, the booty then popped out a little bit bigger. So now they like, you got something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so now they somebody called me Monica, right? I'm like, my name ain't Monica, I'm Mona. They like, nah. You, you kinda, Monica. You kind of rocked the Monica. You kind of look like Stella getting her groove back in. You know. <laughs> My supervisor, Caucasian man, he he played the song. That song, what you doing? Where you at? Oh yeah, he came and stood by me, and he tried to do the same. <laughs> and I'm laughing. Or I came through the door, and they clapping. But I've never not been Mona Lachey. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So is that pretty privilege? Or I don't know if that's pretty privilege. That's just me being me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And people will appreciate when you are secure Authentic. within yourself. I agree. Mm-hmm. Look how that lady just comes in and commands the room. Yeah. Look how that lady has her own self-esteem, her own self-confidence. And that's why BGP and this broadcast is very important. We don't just talk about it. And I didn't think that she had a healthy resolution. We do have healthy resolutions here. Her resolution was kind of like in the 37 years of her life, now she understands that mm. she has to love herself more. Right. But that's why a sisterhood is important. Yes. Yes. That's why... Um, I might say it hard to you. Nisha might say it soft. Adrian going to be sweetie, sweetie, and be like, it's okay. But <laughs> we're a sisterhood, and you're going to get it. You might get it hard. You might get it soft. Sisterhoods are important to make help you fix your crown, exactly. mm-hmm. help you be Straighten on your square. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we can't even perform those sisterly duties for um, another sister because they become offended. But when things are not working for you, sis, you got to let you gotta yourself change. go. You got to change. Yeah. You got to change. You got you got to do, do something it. Something different. Mm-hmm. I agree. If yeah. it's not working and you've been doing it this whole time and it's still not working, are you in the same situation? You 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 got to switch it up. It's not it's not working for you. And I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, like I like I said, I I deem myself to be that average black woman, right? I don't have the quote unquote exotic features. I have my West African Nigerian features, my nose, my lips, forehead, skin tone, everything, right? But I don't allow that to like stop me from doing what I'm supposed to do, attracting whom I attract and just enjoying my life. Like I'm not gonna make a YouTube about woe is me kind of a thing, mm-hmm. but I, I can empathize and understand mm-hmm. how some women feel that way. Right. But I guess it, go, it, it goes back to what Mona and both Adrian said that when you have that good sisterhood where the women in your life aren't competing with yes, you, they it. wanna see you win just like they win. They wanna pull you up when they have that one leg up. They want us all to be on that successful platform. Then you, it kind of eliminates that need to have um, situations like this. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's missing between the millennial generation and the other generations is they didn't have that that pull up to say, come on, I got you. I know what you're going through, so here is how we should move, maneuver mm-hmm. going forward. They don't have that. And so they're trying to, to figure it out. We at least even though a lot of the balls were dropped, we at least did have some of that before things changed. But for them, it's kind of like they're trying to figure it out. They also have the internet. We didn't have the internet. So our influences was a little bit different compared to theirs. Exactly. They can pick up a phone and you, you, you who's beautiful? Top 10, okay, right? right? Who's who's successful? Top five. Like they have all this at their fingertips and, and it's easily it's easily shoved down their throats compared to when we were coming up. Like the, the computers and you know, phones and all that, that didn't come to later on after we were adults. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So our influences was our family and our friends and whatnot. It and maybe the T V a little bit compared to how in today's time where television rules the world. Television and the pretty much the internet rules the world. So we do need that sisterhood. Mm-hmm. We do. I agree. Yeah. There are so many women out here that that suffer from low self esteem that we deem pretty look at 
how little Kim destroyed herself. Mm. I feel bad for her. Look how look how K Michelle just. I feel her bad for her. Look how Phaedra Parks just did a face. I feel bad her for face. her. Yep. Look at Delicious, who is already yep. a beautiful girl. Yeah. How she ruined her face. Look at Serena Williams, um, how she ruined herself. And for that young chocolate sister, Miss Stephanie, um, there are some beautiful dark skinned women. Beautiful, absolutely. And yeah, they have exactly. privilege too. Yeah, yeah. You know what Absolutely. I'm saying? Like I say, beauty is subjective. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Self-love is the best love. Yes. Self-love is. Mm-hmm. Yes. It is. And until yes. you can love yourself, every relationship you get in is doomed. Because and it, how can you love someone else if you, you can't, can't love yourself? And if yeah. you don't love yourself, how can you expect someone else? Exactly. To love you? True. So true. Because you have to teach them how to love you. But if you, te- if you treat yourself like crap, if you see yourself as crap, like I, I've, I've checked a friend recently on that because her opening liners is usually like, I'm the fat one. I'm the unattractive one. I don't have this going for me. And I'm like, why do you do that? Like, stop. Don't do that. Because if that's what you're leading with when you're interacting with men, then it's not going to work well for you because mm-hmm. one or two things going to happen. One, they're going to play you for whatever it is you do feel like you have. Let's say it's just your finances, right? They're going to play you for it. Or two, they're going to be like, no, your self-esteem is too low. Mm-hmm. I, can't, I can't work with that. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm good. I'm not going to. The same way we say we don't want to do the Builder Bear project or Oof. we got to build a man. Men don't want to build a woman like that either. They want you to kind of come together as far as, like, your self-esteem mm-hmm. and having it together. Exactly. Like, it, they, they just do, especially once you reach a certain age. You know what I mean? They, they don't want to play have to do that project. And I'm only saying that based on conversations where I've had with men and they're just like, I can't, I can't do it. I can't yeah. do it, sis. Like, her self-esteem is too much. Mm-hmm. Her insecurities is too much. So she's been cheated on and now I got to pay for this shit. Like, yeah. I don't want to deal with it. Yeah. I'm cool. I'm cutting her off. And some, some would be nice enough to tell you why they cutting you off. Some would just ghost you and be like, man, fuck it. I blocked her. Yeah. So sad. You know. And you know, a lot of times we've been broken down. If you've been in previous relationships where you were called out of your name, you were called out of your name, or it was uh, one of those situations where they just belittled you all the time. And, and, and I think it's true. In abusive relationships, the physical part does heal. The black mm-hmm. eye goes away. The busted mm-hmm. lip heals up. But when they said you are fat and ugly and you ain't never going to have nobody, ain't no nigga going to want you with these kids... You begin to believe that stuff, mm. and it sets in your psyche, and it's there. It's always back there, and every time you get any type of rejection, you pull it up. Well, maybe mm. what he said was true. Maybe what he said was accurate, and you start to believe that. And so to turn that around sometimes is very difficult. So I I, uh, I think like what Mona and you both said is that sisterhood is so important that you get around your group of people, your circle is constantly motivating and inspiring you. Girl, you look good today. Or if you are having a better, go put, some, let's go do this or put something else, else on and you can be able to receive that. Yes. You know what I mean? Because not everybody can receive it. They get offended because you done said uh, your little outfit don't look too good. or you, you know what I mean? So I think that sisterhood is so important to help us get past some of those insecurities and low self-esteem. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You- <laughs> It's not hard to get over. You have to want to get over it. That's Here's it. the thing. I was dating a man that was maybe about 10 years younger than me, and he got pissed off at me because he was doing... And and, and when you date someone younger, you have to understand there's a sense of immaturity mm-hmm. that's going to go along with the uh, relationship. So he would do a lot of immature things, mm-hmm. and I would not react to him. So that would piss him off. So one day he fixed his mouth to say he was trying to keep my old ass vibrant, right? Oh! (laughs) (laughs) So, had I been the woman that did suffer from low self esteem, that could have affected me, but it didn't. Because, first of all, buddy, (laughs) I wasn't checking for you, you was checking for me. So, Mm. I must have been vibrant enough with my old ass for you to try to get at me for over a year. So, once I said that, because he was trying to. Make me suffer from low self esteem. He got offended, you know. So sometimes people use reverse psychology yes. on you to make you have low self esteem. And here's some something else: there are a lot of men out here, and I've heard it with my own ears that will say they will never tell a pretty woman she's pretty. I've heard mm. that. 
I've heard men say that. Mm -hmm. So pretty women go through it just like everybody else True. go through it. My thing is, if it's not working in your face, bring out your femininity. Smile, like Nisha said. Back them eyelashes. Sit that lip out. Speak softly. Mm -hmm. Compliment that man. Mm -hmm. Every woman has a womanly feminine yep. privilege. Yep. Exactly. I don't know a man that if you say, excuse me, sir, can you get that for me? No, I ain't gonna get. I've never heard a man never. say that. Now in a nightclub, I have I have had that. There was one night that I, me and my girlfriend were going out. She was a hairstylist. I was a hairstylist. We worked on a Sunday. We was trying to go out. She got off early. I still had to work till nine o'clock at night. So she called and she was like, "Hurry up! You know I'm looking good. I want somebody to see me." So I'm like, "Okay, I'm getting. You know I'm I'm cleaning up my station. I gotta go. You know clean up the shampoo area. Now I got to do my hair, right?" So she kept on calling, come on, come on, I'm looking good, I want somebody to see me, right? I said, meet me there. So when I get there, I'm tired as hell. Mm -hmm. I've been on my feet 16 hours. I walked up to this man, he was sitting down, and men used to, when they saw a woman, they would give up their seat. Mm -hmm. I looked, I said, excuse me, sir, I've been on my feet all day. Can you give me that, can I have that seat? He told me, hell no. <laughs> Wow. Oh. And, and you know, I I showed my emotions yeah, she through shows my her, face. Yes. So I tried to have my poker face on, right? But in my mind, I was like, fuck you. Okay. <laughs> but I was so tired, I went to the next dude. So I said, okay, I'm going to have to try a different approach. I said, excuse me, sir. I've been on my feet all day long. I will buy you a drink if you let me have this chair. Do you know he smacked his lips like a woman? <sighs> Ooh. And got up and left. Right? I didn't have time to feel offended. I was tired. <laughs> oh. I didn't give a damn how he did it. Just let me have a chair. So I'm saying, oh, <laughs> have wow. your own self esteem, ladies. Get you some self esteem. <laughs> that is <I> crazy. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, we all go through it. Absolutely. We have, all have bad days. We all have good days. We have days when we feel like we. I'm dating myself today. I look mm -hmm. so good. Don't nobody have to talk to me today. I look so good. And sometimes, like I said, you be like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. hell. You all this hell money. God damn. Aww, <laughs> Everybody no. does hey, it. That's so you true. You wake up because when you wake up in the morning, you're hard. You haven't softened yourself. And that's another thing that we need to talk about. A man can tell how long it took you to get ready in the morning. He could tell if you, you know, hit Took the snooze the five, yeah. five True. times. And True. <laughs> he clothes ain't iron, you hit you all the shovel. Then I am, right? And then they'd be like, ah, she takes proper care of herself. Yeah. I like her. Yeah. So you have some self-esteem. It's free. Yeah, true, <laughs> it true. It's free. And I think it's important that we pamper ourselves, too. And I, and I just learned how to do this, like, in the last couple of years. It's like I have a day I call my A day. It's just me all day, my day. If I want to go to the movies, I used to feel funny going to the movies by myself or going to treat myself to lunch that day. I think it builds something in you because even though you're by yourself, it's you feel good about it. And I think we all should have a day where you just do something for yourself. If somebody wants to, you know, you can tell them yes or no that they can join you or whatever. But some days you just need that time for you to make you feel good. I think every day is a pepper day for a woman. Mm. Every uh, and that's why I'm saying soften yourself in the yes. morning. If you lay down next to a man in the morning, y'all both wake up looking rough. Ooh, yeah, get up, take that <laughs> bath, take that shower. You know, moisturize your skin, yeah. spritz yourself with that signature fragrance. Don't wait for a club or a social event to wear your two hundred dollars. To feel beautiful, yeah, yeah, I agree. Feel beautiful. Day. I agree. Put that mm -hmm. lace bra and panty set on, even I if agree. it's um, underneath Under some sweatpants. Yes. Because how you come out into the world, it's, it's going to show. It sure yep. does. I agree. And words are powerful. Stop saying I'm ugly. Stop saying I'm unattractive. I'm unworthy. I'm never going to have all of her videos. I'm not going to have any kids. I'm not going to get married. <laughs> God damn, Debbie Donner. Get the fuck <laughs> on. <laughs> True. I'm sorry. Uh, and she's not an unattractive lady. I could hook her up. I said, mm, I'll give her some Chinese bangs. She got to lose that wig. I could do this to her. Hey, Pour positivity in yourself. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. uh, we final thoughts. Time. Final <laughs> thoughts. This final thoughts, Adrian. I think. I, I think um, today just made me really think about how important it is for sisterhood and how important it is to pour into our sisters that are maybe struggling with this very thing. So, um, love who you are. Love yourself, and um, it's gonna be okay. 
I agree. For me, I would say know your know your advantages and disadvantages. Stay in your lane. Like mm-hmm. I I know my lane. I know what works for me. Mm-hmm. I know who I attract. I know what I like, and I I stay in it. I don't go for those that I know don't usually check for people that look like me. If you do that, then yeah, you will be disappointed. Right. Um, it's okay to have your bad moments or your bad days. We all have them, but just pour into yourself. And if you don't know how to find other women who do, who can pour into you and Mm -hmm. teach you how to, you know, love yourself better, because when you love yourself, truly, truly love yourself, other people around you will see it. Other people you attract will see it and be like, oh, that, okay, that person is, okay, look how they dress, look how they talk, look how they look. They care about how they appear. And not just to please other people, but just because you know that's how you feel about yourself. Mm -hmm. And they will want to talk to you. They will want to get to know you. So that's my thought on that. Absolutely. Uh, Get in where you fit in. Yes. Go where you're celebrated and appreciated. Yes. Like Nisha say, find your lane and draw the hell out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Get you a sense of style, a sense of courage, a sense of your own self affirmations. Love yourself, and it's all gonna work out just fine. We are BGP. Yes. This was a great episode. Yes. It was. Like, share, subscribe, and until the next one, keep those panties clean. We out. Bye. <laughs>